I will tell about different issues we run into when we use Jeruby uh, in our uh, production and uh, I will provide you different advice how you can troubleshoot this issue and uh, how you can uh, fix them. And at the end I will provide a brief uh, summary about uh, what we get and what you can use uh, for today in JRuby. Okay, let's start. Uh, first of all, uh, why we choose JRuby? Um, uh, about a year ago we started our new sub project and it has uh, some uh, unusual requirements. Uh, we required our application server to be single processor. Uh, we require the ability to use multi uh, real uh, multi threading, and we require uh, ability to share memory between these threads. Uh, this is our production configuration. We started from at the moment uh, of starting uh, stable JRuby version one. 0.6.5 uh, and we mm, use Kirk. Uh, it's a uh, JRuby wrapper from JT based server, uh, JT very cool Java server. Uh, we use Arca as uh, actor library uh, and uh, uh, open GDK6 and abstract for minimizing Kirk. Okay. Um, first of all, uh, even despite Java being quite alien for Unix environment, uh, it can be easily debugged by uh, usual Unix tools. Uh, this is the most used, useful tools, uh, but especially I uh, will notice about the stress and the SOC. It's a very powerful combination. You can debug any issues with uh, not only with uh, JRuby but with plain Ruby and even with uh, different kind of Unix services. Uh, and uh, there is very cool um, pair of tools. It's TCP dump and Wireshark and uh, with this bunch of tools you can debug any network issues. Uh, for example, if you have some trouble with your connection to Postgres, for, to Redis and so on. Mm, let's start on Allsoft. Allsoft uh, is a very powerful tool. Uh, it stays from list of files. You can uh, mm, put it uh, on any process and it will show you all open files, open socket connections and you can uh, understand what, uh, what kind of resources does your process use. Uh, Mm, th this is a soft usage example. Uh, mm, in in first uh, yellow box, uh, it's uh, uh, selected uh, std out. Uh, usually, uh, all services uh, redirect his output to std out, and you can see that uh, std out is redirected into a log file. And uh, all this um, kind of uh, open uh, resources has its own number. Uh, I uh, selected, for example, uh, s uh, 42, it's uh, Postgres uh, connection. And, uh, and let's uh, discuss uh, Stress. Stress is the most powerful debugging tool for Unix because it allows you to uh, to get uh, a clue why, what your process did uh, and how it uh, asked for different operations from kernel. Uh, all kind of outer world activity is going through a stress and you can easily observe it. Uh, uh, here is uh, here is how you can use a stress for JRuby and uh, it should be used in this way because uh, with minus e you uh, can uh, you can filter out uh, some noisy uh, system calls and uh, with minus f you can uh, trace uh, some shells and threads and it's very important for JRuby. Uh, this is little demo. Uh, we try to troubleshoot next issue. We run in IRB next query. It will block. Uh, on uh, Postgres, and uh, we, uh, for example, it is very, uh, it can be really in production, and we get several such cases. 
uh, and you want to find why it's blocked. So uh, first of all, we need to find uh, the bit of our process. I use it uh, here JPS. It's a fancy uh, GVM tool. It shows uh, all uh, Java process for current user, and we get uh, selected by yellow our JDB process. Then we put it into a trace. Um, uh, one moment. Uh, uh, last yellow box you see receive uh, 15 is uh, very important because uh, it shows us that uh, uh, one of our threads is blocked on receiving some information from socket. And uh, when we use also we can find that we uh, that 15 is the number for positive SQL connection and uh, is. Uh, and in this way, we can understand that our process is blocked uh, on getting some data from PostgreSQL. Uh, the first issue we met uh, in our production is uh, was limited performance. Uh, we started to benchmark our application before putting it in real environment, and uh, we hit some limit in throughput. Uh, we updated it to extra large instance, it doesn't help. Uh, and then we uh, observed that our JRuby process uh, used uh, too low memory, it was about 50, uh, 500 uh, megabytes. And then we Google it a lot and find uh, these options, JRuby logs. You can uh, set uh, different Java options uh, in this way. And uh, XMX uh, is the mark maximum level of memory allowed to use by this process. And after this, uh, Jeruvi obtained required memory amount and we get required throughput. So don't, uh, don't hesitate to read uh, GM documentation because it contains uh, different uh, useful configuration options. Another issue was when we uh, uh, deployed our application. At first stage, application server and database was on different hosts, and we um, observed uh, very weird uh, behavior. Uh, our application was totally stuck, and uh, uh, only about uh, after 20 seconds it started responding. Uh, this thing, uh, that it can be related to some issues with connection to Postgres. We, we dumped that, uh, all traffic between application and database server and uh, observed strange behavior. Uh, our Ruby sends too many spam requests to Postgres and after Googling we found that this, uh, it was a known issue and uh, we should only update uh, the gem file to uh, get shit done. Okay. <coughs> uh, now uh, I want to discuss uh, GVM toolbox. Uh, first of all, uh, as for me, the main appealing feature of JRuby is that uh, it uses GVM, and GVM has a very um, big bunch of different tools, and it's uh, out of the box tools, very impressive, as you can see, and uh, there are a lot of different uh, third-party tools which, which can be easily used and uh, um, uh, here is a list of most, most important and uh, JPS I already mentioned it uh, let's start from most uh, web vaporized uh, and known uh, JRuby killer app it's Visual VM uh, Usually, JRuby is promoted through Visual VM because it looks very nice. Uh, let's see how it looks. Uh, uh, you can uh, monitor with uh, Visual VM any uh, activity inside your uh, Java virtual machine. Uh, you can uh, see how your memory is going. You can even manually co-perform garbage collector or get a heap dump of, of your running environment. Uh, and heap dump is very important for uh, debugging. Another, another cool properties of Visual VM is allows you to observe in real time your threading behavior. You can see when some threads stuck on mutex on 
uh, what exactly your third uh, do. Uh, but in reality, the most important uh, thing you can do with Visual Web for troubleshooting different issues is obtaining a Jerubistic trace. Uh, usually, if you have some issue and your process stuck, uh, if you get a Ruby web trace, you will know what, uh, what can be a reason for this issue. Uh, this is recite, but I will show you on this screenshot. Uh, you should select uh, your uh, Ruby process. Uh, you should install mbeans plugin and it will add this tab. In mbeans you can uh, find uh, org Ruby uh, folder and when you unwrap it uh, to the uh, runtime, uh, you can call this operation, it's thread dump and thread dump uh, looks like this. Uh, I uh, mm, I run, uh, forgetting this thread dump, I run read and uh, execute uh, blocking uh, query as in previous example and you can see that uh, our process is stuck uh, in test controller with on select sleep action and uh, if we take a look higher we can see that uh, the last uh, uh, thing our process did it was executing uh, JDBC part. So it's uh, really stuck on executing some query. Mm. Another very um, important tool is a JSTAG or it's analog, kill minus quit. Uh, you can send kill minus quit to any Java process and it will uh, put a stack trace of all running threads into uh, your uh, stdl or usually it, it will be application lock. Um, this, uh, this kind of stack trace is Java stack trace, but in any way it can be very helpful because Visual Web should be configured to get into your running process and uh, these uh, two tools can be used in any moment uh, and uh, on any Java uh, in any Java configuration. Here is a sample. Mm, I, uh, here I use uh, usual OPS to find our Jiruby process. Uh, I use a JSTAG uh, and JSTAG prints uh, his output into your console, but uh, it, uh, it can not work in case of your JVM stack and uh, in this case it's better to use Q-Squid. And even if you don't know Java, you can observe uh, some known world, JRuby, and it's the last world. You can see it's readline. Readline usually uses it for IRB to get some input from, uh, from a study. And uh, if we take a look uh, upper, it's, uh, uh, we see Java did native method code and it blocks on it and uh, it reads. Uh, so, uh, th in this uh, case, uh, it's a usual prompt in IRB and, ja uh, and JRuby waits for your input. Mm, uh, uh, in similar way, you can observe uh, blocking on mutex or uh, blocking on connection to database or reading its input. Uh, so, JSTAC is quite uh, similar to uh, stress in this way. Uh, our third issue was the Trails 3.1 and Street Safe, and uh, we get again stuck in process, and it was not fun. But uh, with JSTAC and Visual Web, we find the root of this issue. It was in connection to logic. Uh, this part of Rails uh, was written very poor, and uh, I saw uh, I saw Tender Tenderloaf uh, made some fixes, but it doesn't look very uh, solid. Uh, if you need this fix, you can take a look what was done. And uh, in any in any way, I should mention one thing: if you write some gem, if you did it, uh, please uh, uh, be street safe. Use. Uh, uh, some normal approaches and don't use global states because uh, it really hurts and uh, 
it can take a lot of time to debug this issue in production. Uh, after this issue, uh, I started thinking about some magic debugging tool which can help me with uh, understanding the real uh, root of issue. Because uh, even if you know that it was Postgres, you don't know what kind of query led to this issue. And uh, I remember my experience uh, with the run, when you can sneak into any running run project, uh, process, you can connect into it, and then you can do different manipulation. You can get any state inside of your running along machine, because it was very cool. Uh, and uh, the first uh, tool uh, that was used uh, for this, it was Java Debugger. I, I thought um, maybe JDB can help in it. And uh, GDB quite powerful, but uh, it, um, it you you really can get any information. You can sneak into any process. You can investigate it, and uh, it's all possible, but in not very useful way because uh, uh, JRuby has quite complex internal structure, and uh, it's very hard to uh, investigate all the structure in GDB. It's not very useful for this. And then, uh, finally, I find this very cool and real JRuby killer app. Uh, it's Eclipse Memory Analyzer, and uh, the first uh, application for it is uh, the most simplest memory detection tool ever uh, can be <laughs> in this world, and it's uh, the most popular memory leak detection tool for GVM, and you can use it for really easily find uh, memory leaks, but uh, in our production we don't struggle from memory leaks, and uh, um, but we find different applications for this tool. Uh, I, I should tell that uh, memory analyzer is very useful especially for investigation as uh, the real reason of uh, bug. Uh, because um, it allows you to, uh, from your uh, GVM heap, uh, you can easily uh, investigate all internal states of GVM. Uh, to use uh, memory analyzer, you should uh, obtain heap down. Heap down can be get via JMAP or by visual lamp, I shown this button and uh, after getting hip, hip dump you can feed it into memory analyzer it will look like this uh, memory analyzer uh, get hip dump uh, it's memory hip file uh, in my case and uh, mm, you will see this uh, blue icon uh, and in this icon there is uh, java basics and suite of reuen step it's, uh, and after this you can go just under the hood and uh, investigate everything inside your virtual machine you can get uh, access via this object to any ruby information it's the main object it holds uh, all links to all states and so on you can get into any JRuby frame and, uh, um, and this tool is incredible if you heart really tough issue. Uh, I guess if uh, uh, MRI had uh, some, something similar, especially if you don't need to reinvent the wheel, uh, all we need is to support heat dumping for MRI and it will be really cool to get such functionality and uh, ability to investigate real internal state and as example of usage i uh, discussed my force issue with our production it was the uh, most tough issue uh, time to time we again get server stuck and uh, in this case we use jstack we see that our threads uh, block it partially on mutexes partially on postgres connection uh, but we don't know what kind of queries uh, produce this behavior and uh, using the memory analyzer we uh, get to the required place and find the real SQL query bot uh, which was because of this issue. 
uh, reason was in our quirk uh, work with mute access in combination with Postgres transaction, and uh, you should avoid using directly mute access in your uh, multi-threaded application. Use uh, actors because it's much simpler and solid solution. Uh, and the last issue I want to discuss is afterload. You don't you please if you write your gems, don't use afterloads. It's totally unsafe, safe, and we get uh, some strange errors when uh, our application time to time throws uh, some random errors, uh, and we understand that it can be because we have multi-threading environment, and one thread uh, Ruby starts to initialize classes. In parallel thread, it tries to create object of this class, and it doesn't help all properties, and uh, it can lead to this wire errors. Uh, uh, we reproduce this behavior even in, in an array, uh, so it's not the only JRuby issue. And uh, you uh, don't use up a lot. And to fix, you can uh, just uh, enumerate all classes which uh, is loaded by after load, and it will be loaded. Uh, before you go into multi-threading mode in, in, in Rails initializer. Mm. So, a uh, little summary. Uh, what we observed from our experience, uh, the two main reasons for blocking uh, threads in Ruby is block on Utex. You can investigate it by JSTAC or J, uh, Visual Lab and uh, block on some system call. It's a uh, connection to Postgres, uh, some file reading, because uh, uh, on Amazon your file system is not local, and it can be a swell issue for you to read from files. And uh, this kind of issue is very easily uh, trackable by GStack or um, stress and both soft combination. Mm. Um, by today, I suggest you, if you uh, think about using JRuby in production, uh, I suggest you to use uh, Ruby 1.7 when it will be released currently. I try to preview second, and it's about 30% faster than previous stable version. Uh, OpenGTK 7 is uh, as well very good, because it uh, as well uh, provides some speed, speed up. Uh, I've tried to invoke dynamic uh, in our configuration, but it doesn't give us any speed up. Uh, mm, so, for us it doesn't work. Maybe in GTK 8 it will work. Uh, for actors you can use ACA or uh, more Ruby solutions to load it. And uh, avoid writing any mutex logic, use actors because it's very lightweight and easy solution for uh, any developer. Uh, as application server, you can use Trinidad or Jetpack. Trinidad is much simpler, so if you're new to GVM, I suggest you to take a look at first in Trinidad. And uh, in new Ubuntu, Upstart gets get many cool improvements and it simplifies a lot the uh, demonizing of your application. Uh, in fact, we use start instead of combination of Monit and Monit scripts. Mm, uh, at current stage, JRuby work, works out stable, uh, below actors, below threads, because we don't struggle from ill latency, and it's a usual pain of any uh, usual MRI process. Uh, and uh, it, uh, we need much more, much less memory consumption. Uh, we don't use the ground workers, we just uh, use actors for any blocking activity. And if JRuby appeals to you, you can try it, and it's quite stable and a good solution. This friendly and uh, good community. That's all. Yeah.